Hi there, it is Thursday, and we are deep into our Seek Week at this point. Now, we've been having some amazing times of prayer, but I have one rule for a prayer meeting, and here it is. It's the Heath Hyatt rule for a prayer meeting. It's have something come out of your mouth. From the abundance of the heart, the Bible says, the mouth speaks. And if you look at the Bible, all through it, we have the recordings of people's prayers, Jesus and others. Why? Because it wasn't just something happening in their mind. It was something coming out of their mouth. So before we get too much further, let's spend some time in worship together, though, because that's what prepares our heart. Let's worship now.
Now with our heart in the right place because of worship, we're going to be talking about the tabernacle prayer model. This is one of my favorites, uh, one of the ones I use on a, a very regular basis. Now the tabernacle was a tent in the time of the Old Testament that was kind of like a, a temple, but it was a tent. You know, like we have church buildings and then we have like churches and tents and tent revivals. That's kind of the idea. And we're going to see how each part of the tabernacle was a way of entering into and getting closer to the Lord. We're going to go through the different parts of it here um, and see how those represent our own walk towards the Lord. Okay, so in the Old Testament, the tabernacle was the dwelling place of God. He lived there in the, on the Ark of the Covenant. It was built to his specifications exactly, and God would meet with his people right there. It was where he would meet with them. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be meeting with God through this tabernacle prayer model. Okay. The tabernacle had seven distinct stations that you went through. These stations can be used as a prayer model to show us steps we can take to connect with him. So that's what this means. So we're going to go through now the first of the seven uh, steps here, which is the outer court, like the outside uh, as you come through the, the main gate. Psalms 100 verse 4 says, we enter his gates with thanksgiving. Here we pray thanksgiving prayers for all that God has given us and for all the people in our lives. The first prayer we start with is a prayer of thankfulness and gratefulness for all that God's done for us. It's a way to get our hearts in the right place. We enter into this time of prayer with thankfulness and gratefulness. Let's pray that right now here together. God, we pray and we thank you for all the wonderful people you put in our life, all the wonderful things you put in our life. Lord, we thank you for our family. We thank you for our church. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our nation. God, specifically, we have things to thank you for. That are, that are really just blessings from you. And we want to enter into this time of prayer with a thankful heart of all you've done and for all the great things you've done. Lord, we are small and you are big and you are working on our behalf. And we are so very grateful and thankful for all the things that you're doing, God. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now let's take a few moments and you can pray prayers of thankfulness for the things in your life. Thank you.
After the outer courts, we're going to get to the brazen altar. Now, the brazen altar is where they would sacrifice animals and in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, we have Jesus. He's our sacrificial lamb. And so we are going to thank God for the gift of Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. So at this time, we're going to pray for everything that the cross provided. We're going to pray for salvation and just thank God for the salvation that we have in our own lives. We're going to thank him for our healing in our bodies and in our minds. We're going to thank him for the redemption that we couldn't earn it. We would never, ever be able to pay anyone for it, but God gave us that redemption. And we're also going to pray um, and thank God for the blessing that God has given us over our lives through the cross and not an easy journey in itself. It was a sacrifice. It was painful. God was, Jesus was tormented. He was tortured so that we could have a relationship with him. So let's pray and just thank God for the plan of the cross right now. Father, we just thank you right now for the beautiful plan that you had from the beginning of the cross, God, that you set this into motion, Lord, so that we could have a relationship with you. We thank you that Jesus is our sacrificial lamb. He's perfect. He never did anything to deserve the punishment, but he took the punishment on him of our sins, of the things that we did, so that he could provide us with that relationship. He could be the bridge that could just give us this healing and the redemption and the salvation and the forgiveness. We're so thankful for that. We thank you for the cross, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Now take this time and personally just connect with God and thank him for the plan of the cross.
know, moving through this, this is just um, an awesome prayer model. And now we're at the laver or the laver. I've heard it both ways, but uh, it was a large washing bowl. And it was used actually for ceremonial washing for the priest, the high priest that ministered and, and were preparing to go even closer to the manifested presence of God. And the awesome part about these prayer models is we always have this God's God's everywhere. We know he's always present, but there's a manifested presence where we feel that relationship in a deeper way. And one of the things that hinders us at times is if we feel unclean or unworthy and we see that. We get, uh, we get to pray for God to forgive our sins and wash us completely clean. And we get to pray through all the areas of our heart that need cleansing of the Holy Spirit. And I'm rem- reminded in 1 John 1, 9, where it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And this, and this actually was a basin where you could look in and see areas you were unclean, but also helped you to see to be cleansed and see that you were clean after the fact. And so as we pray, just be aware that it's the Holy Spirit that does the work. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals, and it's the Holy Spirit that cleanses. We just get to enjoy the benefits of the relationship and trust and have confidence in that cleansing power. Let's do that now. Lord, we just pray. We pray that as we are uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to examine us and show us any areas in our life that need cleansing, that you wash us. You wash us through your word. You wash us through prayer. You wash us through revealing these things. And we pray that you just cleanse us of any sins in our heart that we need to confess. I pray that you bring them to our heart and our mind right now and help us to have that assurance of faith in your ability to make us clean, to cleanse us from even the pollution of sin in our lives. And we trust you, we trust your cleansing power, and we trust in the in the power of God to set us free from the guilt and condemnation of the sins that we have been cleansed of, in Jesus' name. So go ahead and take some time now and let the Holy Spirit just show you any areas of your life where you might need to get cleansed and allow the Holy Spirit to do that work in your life right now.
The next station after the laver is the candlestick. And you probably can think of the menorahs that you see around Hanukkah. This was a seven branched candlestick. It represents the church and its people. And we are the ones that the Holy Spirit burns in and through. We are the light of the world. When Jesus left and gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit, he ascended, he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit 40 days later. Um, this is why we are the light of the world because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. So we are going to pray that we are just immersed in the Holy Spirit. We're baptized in the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray that we are a light into our dark, dark world, that when we go into our workplaces and our schools and even in our families, um, that we are different, that God has created us to be different. So we're going to pray that God just continually burns out those impurities that are inside of us so that when people see us, they see Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you right now for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. We thank you, God. It's such a gift. We thank you that we just open ourselves up. Holy Spirit, we want to turn your voice loud up in our lives, God. If there are things that we need to change, that we need to transform, God, I thank you that you are giving us the power through your Holy Spirit to do that. I thank you, Lord, that you purify us, God. And I thank you that as you purify us, God, that you make us light into your world. We thank you, God, that as we are fully immersed in what you have for us, God, I thank you that you make us different. God, that you break our hearts for what breaks yours. Thank you, God, for just the beautiful people in our church, the capital C Church, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are just setting us on fire for you. God, that we can't be quiet about it. God, that we just love to share the things that you've done. And it's not for our glory, God, but for your glory in Jesus' name. Now take this time and just personally ask the Holy Spirit to fill you up, give you new life, give you that fresh breeze that, that just feels so good. And I know that you're going to be encouraged. Thank you. 
All right, here we are at uh, the Tabernacle Prayer, and uh, we're going to talk about the table of shewbread. Now, this is a very important part of that table because this bread represents the bread of life, which is the word of God, which we need desperately in our lives. Without it, we don't even have the right directions to go where God's calling us to go because God leads us through his word. So today I want you to understand that that then there was a table of ceremonial bread. This bread represented the Bible. Pray for a new hunger for the Word of God. And that's what I am going to pray for myself and for you and for all of us, for the body of Christ, that we devour the Word of God. We hunger after, we thirst after, we want we want what it has for us. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just come before you right now. And we we come before you humbly, Lord Jesus. There's times we know that we have been weak and we've been, we've been short. But Lord Jesus, we know that if we continually reach out to you, that you will, we will get to hunger to devour your word, to know you more, to allow this word to, to speak into our lives, to allow this word to correct us, to allow this word to become an uh, everyday part of our existence. Lord God, we call upon that right now. We call upon your hunger for our lives so that this bread will nourish us and, and strengthen us and we will fulfill everything that you've called us to do as we, we eat of this goodness of yours. This I pray in Jesus' name amen now let's just take a few minutes and pray this prayer
As we continue on into the Holy of Holies, this is the altar of incense. This is a place where the fragrance of the incense would be lifted up into heaven. And this represents our worship to God. At this moment, what we want to do is we want to worship God in, with everything in our hearts, everything in our minds. We just want to lift it up to him, so how much he means to us, how much he's done for us, what he's going to do for us. We just lift up our, our hands as a sign of surrender. We lift up our hands as a sign of thank you. We worship him in this time. Let's pray about the worship. Lord Jesus, let us have a heart of worship after you. We want to praise you in everything that we do, in our actions, in, in, in songs, in our praises, in our prayers. We lift you up in all things. You are higher, you are mightier than all, and we lift you up time and time again. Just like the incense of the Old Testament, we are lifting our praise and our worship to you. Let it be all to you. Let it be no distractions, just all our worship to you. In Jesus' name. At this time, friends, I encourage you to worship the Lord in your personal prayer time here today. Thank you. 
Well, here we are again at uh, Tabernacle, and we're going to be praying. And uh, this is about the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, it basically was the final uh, place in the tabernacle that where God's presence was, where his throne was. And, and the children of Israel would come and, and uh, they would want to experience the presence of God. And uh, that's what's wonderful about what Jesus has done for us. We don't have to send someone in there. We can go in there and we can be in his presence and we can lift our loved ones up and ask the, the God of all this creation to come down and let their presence be upon them through every situation they're going through. So we want to pray for the people around your life, all those who are hurting and in need. So let's do that right now. Lord Jesus, I just lift each and every heart that is being lifted up to you right now as we join together and we know that there's people that we have a desire for them to uh to walk into your presence i even pray lord jesus that many of them that don't know you that your presence will be at their front door and when they open it up they walk into your presence and all of a sudden you become a part of their life they sense something that is so powerful so we we lift up all these needs all these hurts all these pains all these things that the our love ones are going through right now through divorce through separation through through uh losing a job whatever it is lord we lift us up and we ask that your presence come and minister to them and give them the peace that passes all understanding and that's yours we pray this in the name of jesus amen now let's just take a moment and lift these prayers up to him
hey, we are growing, aren't we? It's, it's been amazing what God's been doing. Now, we just wrapped up today. We got one more day. It's time to push in and press in. I'll see you tomorrow morning for Seek Week.